Alice never thought there was anything wrong with letting her baby Jack sleep with the foal who was much bigger than her. But that couldn't be further from the truth. This went on for weeks. But Alice was completely unaware of the reality. Only three years later, Alice was faced with the harsh reality that she had made a big mistake by keeping the foal so close to Jack. Alice didn't quite know what to think. The police hadn't spoken to her when they found out what had happened. What was going on? She thought it was an investigation. But she felt there was a lot more going on that she hadn't been aware of. The police got back to Alice in the waiting room ten minutes later. Before Alice could even wonder what was going on. The police informed her that. She would be taken to the interrogation room and that. They had some questions to ask. Alice was surprised. Alice asked to be let go as the police began to explain the situation. Alice suddenly realized that it all made sense. It was all leading back to her. But what was really going on? What happened to Jack and the foal? Why was Alice being suspected? From the moment Alice looked the young foal in the eye. She knew this was the horse she wanted. It wasn't a fully grown horse as her husband Greg preferred. She wanted a horse that she could be a second mother to. And that seemed perfect to her. Alice had to admit that it would be quite a challenge to raise a foal. In fact. She couldn't even describe everything she had to do for him. At first. She was pretty sure she could raise him well. But as time went on. She began to second guess herself. However she knew it was the right decision. However, she had little knowledge of all the different species of horses and how to care for them. When she contacted the seller, she got only vague answers she didn't fully understand. But she didn't care. She had other things to worry about. The important thing was to convince her husband Greg that this was the right horse for the family. All she had to defend herself with were the seller's statements. Such as. He's the sweetest foal I've ever had on our farm. And. He's great with kids. She hoped they were enough to convince him. Alice finalized the adoption process that afternoon. Although the seller apparently really liked the horse. He was also very happy to see him go. He said it was because he deserved a happy home with good parents. But was he telling the truth? On her way home, Alice began to have some doubts about her choice. The foal, who was given the name Bonfire, would soon grow up and might scare her son Jack. When she got home and looked at Bonfire in the trailer, these doubts quickly disappeared. Alice felt radiant. She felt she had hit the mark. It was kind of a best of both worlds situation. The horse seemed peaceful and seemed to bond with her son Jack. Which is what Alice and Greg were looking for. But isn't that too good to be true? As Alice pulled into the driveway and out of the car. She could feel Greg's eyes burning through the window. She hesitated for a moment. Then pulled Bonfire out of the trailer. She saw that Greg looked even angrier. But that was to be expected. Fortunately. She found strong support in an unexpected place. When Alice took Bonfire to the stables behind her house. Jack was already there waiting for her. The toddler was over the moon with excitement. He petted Bonfire without hesitation and lay down next to him. Bonfire and Jack immediately seemed to feel comfortable together. Although Bonfire was very excited. He seemed to refrain from expressing it. When Greg entered the stables, the first thing he saw was his son lying down with the big animal. Bonfire, in turn, gave him a few playful nuzzles. Alice couldn't help but smile. It was everything she had hoped for. Greg couldn't stay upset after seeing this. But he would have been damned. If he hadn't kept an eye on the newcomer to the family. It wouldn't be long before Alice began to see red flags. In Bonfire's relationship with her son Jack. 
The first thing Greg noticed was that Bonfire was very social with people. It didn't matter how old they were or how they reacted to him. Some people, however, were afraid the first time they saw him. After all, he grew up quickly. How good he was with people. How mean to other horses. When Jack was in the stables, Bonfire was defensive against the other horses. Sometimes he even became aggressive. He didn't attack the other horses. But he still showed his teeth and always watched them. Greg was pretty sure that if one of the horses got close to Jack, Bonfire could unleash real fury on the horses. In the short time the horse lived with the family, they almost experienced this situation. The bond between Jack and Bonfire seemed special. They were always together. And Bonfire never let Jack out of his sight. It even got to the point where Jack decided to sleep in the stables with Bonfire. A beautiful sight to see, but Greg was sure that it wasn't a good idea. Alice went to a nearby horse farm with Jack and Bonfire. She already thought this might create tension. So she kept Bonfire close. When they approached the other horse, the situation started to deteriorate. Bonfire again began to get defensive against Jack. They had to do everything in their power to contain Bonfire. To continue talking about things that affected Greg. In the first week, there was another incident with Tiger that would end up being really significant for the family. You see, Bonfire used to eat a lot of things that he shouldn't. In most cases, it's not even that bad because Bonfire just got a little sick. Usually, it would pass after a few days when he would feel like new again. But one day, almost three years after Bonfire's arrival, his health suddenly started to plummet. The family had no idea what he had eaten. What they knew right away was that this problem would not go away. For this reason, Alice didn't hesitate to call the vet urgently. After having the horse for three years, the family had become incredibly attached to the animal. Even Greg. He had become an important part of the family that they could not lose. But this would turn out to be a real possibility. And not necessarily because of the mysterious illness. The visit to the vet would be an event Alice would never forget. Bonfire's condition had begun to deteriorate. Seeing Bonfire's poor condition. Alice decided to send Jack back to the house and handle the situation on her own. At first, the veterinarian wasn't sure what to do. He had a busy schedule that day and was unable to help Bonfire at that time. There was only one decision the vet could make. Send Bonfire to the nearest horse care center two towns away. This made Alice incredibly nervous. Less than an hour later, the service center arrived with a trailer to move Bonfire. Home tears began to roll down Alice's eyes. But she knew it was the only right thing to do. Greg told Alice that Jack was so sad he locked himself in his room. It was sad to see Bonfire go. But it wasn't. The worst thing either. Jack didn't respond to his parents all night. They shouted from the bottom of the stairs. But to no avail. Alice and Greg decided to leave him alone for a while so he could find peace. This turned out to be a big mistake. The next morning, Alice went to wake Jack up for school. Usually, a knock on the door was enough. But today it didn't seem to work. Fifteen minutes had passed. And Jack still hadn't come out of his room. When Alice went to open the door, she got the shock of her life, Jack was nowhere to be seen. His bed was empty. And there was no sign of her son. In her panic. She asked Greg to look for him with her, but he was nowhere to be found. They searched everywhere in and around the house. But it was clear that the boy was not there. After a few minutes. Alice pulled herself together and asked Greg what they should do. Greg immediately picked up the phone to call the police. But the police told him that. 
they could only record the disappearance of a person after 24 hours. Greg was indignant and told the police that it was crazy. But there was nothing he could do. Greg got in the car and started driving around the neighborhood, hoping to find his son. He drove for hours and hours. But there was no sign of Jack. That night, Greg and Alice were completely devastated. They couldn't imagine what could have happened. Where could their son be? How could he disappear into thin air? It turned their world upside down. The next day, Greg immediately went to the police station to report his son missing. He was still upset that it could only be done after one day. It seemed to him that he had lost a day. However, after much paperwork, the entire police force took care of the matter. In the city where they lived, nothing special usually happened. Mostly only minor crimes were committed. Something as big as the disappearance of a child was out of the ordinary. And to make sure they found him soon. They sent a lot of people. The police began questioning many individuals to start the investigation. On the news and in the local newspapers. Pictures of Jack were shown with the message. To call the police station if anyone should see him. However. Days passed. And no new leads came in. That is until the police suddenly showed up at Alice and Greg's house. While investigating the case, the police stumbled upon some disturbing facts about Alice's past. This was enough to consider her the prime suspect. Alice had a difficult past filled with petty misdemeanors. She grew up in a rough neighborhood and saw no other way out except to make a quick buck. She even had a criminal record under another name and had been linked to child trafficking in the past. When the police told her what they had found, Alice burst into tears. She thought that after all these years, her past would no longer follow her. She was clearly wrong. At that very moment, Alice broke down in tears when she heard that. They suspected that she had made her son disappear. It was true that Alice's past was not positive and that she had done many things she would not have done. But at that moment, she felt she had no choice. Besides, she would never have thought of doing anything to her son, her own flesh and blood. However, although Alice claimed to be uninvolved in the matter, the police did not believe her. At the time, the police did not have many leads and had to follow the only information they had namely Alice. Days passed, and Alice remained in custody at the police station. Meanwhile, Greg fell into a state of despair. First, his son had disappeared. Then he learned that his wife was suspected. Greg didn't know what to think. But soon he would have all the answers he needed. Greg knew about Alice's difficult past and also about her different identity that she was desperately trying to hide. By chance, Greg saw an online arrest notice with a woman identical to Alice when they had just met. Greg immediately asked her what she had been hiding. At that moment, Alice knew she could no longer hide her past from Greg. She burst into tears, telling him all about her past and how she had changed. After much hesitation, Greg decided to stay with Alice. Their love seemed unbreakable. But now, years later, Alice found herself in a situation that Greg had feared. He often worried that she might fall back into old habits and go back down the wrong path. For years, everything went perfectly. But now Greg has begun to doubt that Alice really did make her son disappear. There was no reason to think that Alice could hurt Jack in any way. She was a perfect mother and never showed him anything but unconditional love. And all the fights they had. Alice never said anything wrong or hurt Jack in any way. Everything changed after the police received a phone call. It was late when the police officers opened Alice's cell. And told her she was free to go. 
The girl did not understand what was happening and asked the officers to tell her what was going on. The police had made a terrible mistake and knew it. Earlier that day, police received a call from a man a few towns away. He worked for the horse rescue center, where Bonfire had been taken to get back in shape and work on his temperament with the other horses. The phone call changed everything. Bonfire was kept in a stable where he received the best care a horse could receive. Bonfire began to get stronger by the day and was on the verge of regaining his health. Everything seemed to be going perfectly. But they kept hearing strange sounds coming from his stable. A sound that no horse could have made. After a few days of hearing the same sound, they decided to take a look at the stables to see what could be causing it. At first, everything seemed normal. Bonfire was standing in the middle of the barn, looking happy. And the water tank in the corner had nothing strange about it. But when they removed the hay bales, they were surprised beyond all expectations. Behind the hay bales was a boy hiding. That boy turned out to be Jack. The day Bonfire was taken, Jack sneaked into the trailer and followed his best friend. He couldn't leave him alone and had to be with him. Hearing this, Alice teared up with joy and hugged her husband tightly, who had come to pick her up at the police station. Whales are massive mammals that dominate the oceans. But sometimes, they can run into trouble. Although it has no natural enemies, many human activities have extremely serious impacts on it. The humpback became trapped. And a diver who passed by, regardless of his own safety, freed it from its restraints. And then, the unexpected happened. At night, a lone humpback whale swam close to the shoreline. And at first the animal seemed quite at ease gliding peacefully. However, the darkness meant it couldn't see the obstacles in the water. And suddenly, the huge animal became entangled in the rope and it began writhing around. Struggling incessantly. Hoping to free itself from its restraints. But its efforts were in vain. Hours passed. And the whale still could only stay in that place. Waiting for the illusory rescue. James. An experienced diver. Had recently joined a team who had organized their first safari. And this safari involved something very unique. In the early morning. The volunteers were notified that they were going to help something. They were briefly told that it was an animal. Everyone was curious and worried. After all, what animal needs a team to help? Certainly not a simple barnacle problem. The team took their fastest boat and drove to the designated location. It was about seven miles off the coast of San Francisco. And they were shocked and they saw something hidden in the waves. It was a whale. It was bobbing its head up and down. Its eyes were pointing at the crowd. Obviously the whale was watching them probably wondering if these people were malicious. What happened was that the day before the crab traps were set, humpback whales were caught in a series of traps, which collectively weighed about 3,000 pounds, and whose weight acted like an anchor, pulling the whale underwater. Unlike fish, whales cannot breathe underwater. As mammals, they need to swim up regularly for oxygen. Although the humpback continues to surface to breathe, its strength is clearly weakening. The guy has clearly worn out over time. And it's a miracle he's still alive after all he's been under the weight for so long. As the crew watched the whales skim the water, still joking leisurely, alarm bells rang in James's head. Not long ago, on a boat in another place, he witnessed something he'll never let go of. A poor blue whale. Also a victim of multiple attacks by sharks. Now. James is once again in shark-infested waters. Where there are plenty of predators lurking near the shoreline this season. And not only is this whale trapped and unable to defend itself. 
and it's injured. The blood that comes out is like oil leaking into the water. It will spread quickly and dye the sea area with a coveted smell. James knew that nearby sharks would target the stranded whale. James thought he had to do something to help the whale. There was not much time left. And there was only one thing he could do. Jump into the water and free the whale from the trap as soon as possible. James put on his dive gear. And as he prepared. He spoke his mind. And the other divers listened attentively. They trusted this man. He was experienced and of high character. And they admired his demeanor. Looking down at the blue water. James was fully aware of the possibility that sharks were nearby. And the thought of a large carnivorous predator. Even a pack. Stalking around was enough to make one shudder. Even in such a gigantic spirit. Under pressure. James still did not give up his thoughts. James believes that his bravery will win. He does not meditate too much and pay attention. To potential dangers and his own situation. He wants to see the bright side and he wants the whales to be free. Just before James set off. He pulled a crew member to his side and warned him. About the potential threat of sharks and how to deal with them. James knew how to respond to threats. But he wasn't sure the others knew. And he had to give them a serious warning. Not to lose their minds and lose their way if a great white shark suddenly appeared. And let them follow them closely and maintain eye contact. Because humans are a non-food source. And as long as sharks do not regard humans as ordinary fish. They can also serve as a warning in some cases. After a quick scan of the waters around the boat. James turned his gaze to the whales. And so far. No sharks appear to have emerged. With his hands firmly on the protective gear. James stood on the boat. With the others. And in a few moments he was in the water. Joined by all the other divers a few minutes later. James swam up to the whale. Followed by his fellow divers. And as he swam closer he noticed the whale's head was above the water. It was staring straight at him. And although it desperately needed help. It seemed to distrust humans. The closer James got to it. The more he could see the sadness and weariness in the guy's eyes. The kind of emotion any intelligent animal would express. James empathizes with the humpback whale. Which is smart enough for him to understand the danger it's in. Which might view rescuers as a potential threat. In order to appease the humpback. James stretched out a hand and tried to stroke the side of the whale. He said calmly. I am here to help you. And I will not hurt you. The rope was embedded in the whale's skin. No wonder the whale couldn't break free. The rope sank so deep it caused a cut. The first reaction of the whale when it was trapped. Was to run around and try to shake the rope off but it tightened the rope instead. After struggling all night. The humpback was caught in more traps. Judging by the tightness of the rope. The whale must have been stressed. And the crab trap was a mile long. Out of sympathy for the whale. James began to cut the rope. And as one rope after another was cut. The whale was one step closer to freedom. The other divers did their best to help James and avoid harming the whale. Occasionally. James would turn to look for nearby sharks. Reminding divers to be on the lookout. And when he was satisfied with their caution. He would resume cutting the line. He encouraged other divers to continue their efforts. And finally the whale was released. When the last rope released the whale. The whale dived again. The divers cheered and congratulated each other. And they successfully implemented the plan. The team members are proud of James. Not every diver will risk his life to save the whale. James' heroic behavior is undoubtedly great. But that wasn't the most surprising thing that happened that day. It was the whale's reaction. Almost immediately after the whale was released. It returned to the place where the humans rescued it. 
By this time, the others had returned to the boat. But James was still in the water, watching the humpback from a distance. It appeared to be diving deeper. And as the massive creature swam up, he made a beeline for James. When the whale finally came to the surface, it began to give James a gentle nudge. It showed its sincerest thanks with a playful swim. The large animal swam in a figure eight and even spread its fins, trying to hug its savior. The players around James couldn't believe their eyes. A wild whale was playing with a person, like an old friend for many years. For James, this will be an unforgettable memory. A hymn to the friendship between animals and humans. And a spark of the beautiful collision between nature and humanity.